All right, so today we're going to talk about how to fork a repo in GitHub and pull in upstream changes to your local repository. So in the previous videos, we showed how to do a local clone of the Betafight project from the GitHub repository. And that involved hitting the download button here and then taking this link and going into the GitHub desktop, file, clone repository, and we went to URL, put the link in here, gave it a directory, and hit clone. What that did is it really made a local copy that follows directly to the GitHub repository for the Betaflight project itself. You can pull down changes to your local machine, you can make changes and check those in to your local machine, but there's no way to push any changes back directly into the Betaflight project or any other project because it's you, you, know, you don't have those access rights. Now we're going to take a different direction and actually make a fork of this onto your own GitHub account. So I have my own UAV Tech GitHub account here and I want to fork this. Now I've already forked the Betaflight project. I'm not going to go ahead and delete all that to reshow it that way. So we'll just do the Betaflight Configurator project. So I'm going to hit this drop down here, go to the Betaflight Configurator. So this is another Betaflight project. I'm going to go ahead and hit fork up here to fork that to my local repository. So you just hit the button and give it a second and it should only take uh, maybe 30 seconds and then you should be good to go. Up at the top here you'll see your GitHub account and then the new the repository here. Now note you can go under settings or hit edit here as well and you know you can at this point change the name if you wanted to change that name to something else or you can go ahead and delete this repository at any time by hitting the delete button then you, I think you have to type in yes or something I can't remember. So it's you have that settings control now and there's other options in here as well with this now this is a, a local or a basically a web copy of the Betaflight uh, configurator project in this example the next part is we need to have that link to our local machine so how do we do that again we just go into here grab this URL hit copy go into our configurator or our uh, GitHub desktop, hit clone repository, go to URL, paste the URL, and then here we're going to type in, I just have a little directory structure here, and it is key uh, for the building with Docker, which we did in previous videos, to have that under your username account uh, for a Windows user and then I just made a get directory and then I have a passenger uh, folder as well. So I'm going to hit clone. And that will copy down the web-based repository to my local computer here where I can make changes, check those files or those changes in to my local PC and I can sync that back up to the web-based GitHub repository. So it's important to note with this approach that there's kind of two copies here now, right? This is a web-based copy that I have under my account that does not automatically keep itself up to date. So as the developers for the Betaflight configurator are going ahead and making commits on a daily basis or whatever, I'm this code is not updating automatically. Then I'm also copying this down you, you know, through the get desktop here to my local machine and I can make commits. So there's a copy of a copy. None of that automatically has changes ripple through. You have to manually do it. With that said, it's not very difficult. So what I'm going to do is go into my fork of the Betaflight project just to show an example of how to merge upstream changes into your fork. And uh, I have in here two branches that I have. I have the 3.5.x performance edition branch and the master performance edition branch. So why would you go through the fork process versus just the, the local clone or copy direct from the, the Betaflight project? 
Well, there's really two reasons. If you wanted to contribute back to the Betaflight project, you have to make a fork first, make code changes, and then you can do a pull request to ask the main devs basically to pull your changes back in to their main project and then we'll go through a peer review process and so on and so forth. They're gonna ask you to rebase and things like that. So there's more there's some more meets the eye with that. It's not just gonna be pulled in uh, willy nilly. The second part is if you're going to make some changes and then you want to uh, have available some hex files for folks to use, sound familiar? And with that, the GPL license basically says that you have to offer the source code up to anybody that asks. Well, the easiest way to do that is to just have your own local fork. Then it's there. When you go hit releases, it makes a zip file of the data of the uh, source code associated with the release and it's all right there it's very transparent so those are the two reasons why you'd want to do it so as you can see here I haven't touched my fork for 19 days right I haven't made any changes to this so almost a month but if you go back to the main Betaflight project the latest commit there um, was made four hours ago you can see right there so how do I get those upstream changes into my copy or my fork of Betaflight? There's a couple ways to do that. You can do that directly through the GitHub website, but honestly the easiest way is to use GitHub Desktop and to set it to your fork. Click on the branch you want to update. So you got my master performance branch here. So this is the master branch that I want to make my performance edition in. You can see it hasn't been updated for since 18 days ago, but the, the main Betaflight project has been updated four hours ago. You can go into history right here, and then you can hit this compare to. What I want to compare it to is the upstream master, and they have multiple branches here as well. So I can compare it to the branches, which are basically maintenance additions. These are lines in the sand for keeping old, you know, the older code, honestly, up to date for little tweaks and maintenance adjustments. That the master is the main is the main ship where all the advancements are happening. You can see there's 104 changes and seven changes um, that I've done that could get pushed up if I did a pull request, but I'm not going to do that. So, anyways, I'm going to click this upstream master. And then it's going to do a compare. You can see I'm 104 behind and I'm 7 ahead. 7 ahead are the 7 commits I made locally and pushed up to my fork. So to merge those in, I'm going to go ahead hit Merge into Master Performance Edition. That's my branch. And voila! It's all done. Now, in some cases where you would have edited a file that they've edited as well, the master branch, you'd have to do a conflict resolution and I'll show that in a little bit but in this case we were lucky and uh, any of the files I edited none of the upstream contributions have edited those exact same files what a conflict resolution is it's saying okay well the same file was edited by two different people so then it goes down in and it looks at line by line the code changes and you'd have to say which which do you want to keep theirs or yours and we'll show that but in this case, those specific file overlays weren't, uh, didn't have a conflict or a merge resolution that needed to be conducted. So at this point, you can see my local copy now of this uh, master performance edition branch that I have is now an exact match of the Betaflight master branch or the master from the main project. Now, I did not push that up to my GitHub account. So if I look here, you can see if I click this down and go to my Master Performance Edition, this is still going to be out of date by the 18 days. So this is only on my PC. So all I have to do to get that pushed up is hit push. That will push that up to my fork on GitHub. 
end to the branch. And then if I hit refresh, you can see three minutes ago that that received all the updates. So now my local copy is in sync with my branch and my fork, and that's, that's how you do it. Okay, so I'm going to pop over to my master branch, the master of my file, not one of the uh, downstream branches here that I have, but the master branch of my fork, and then I'm comparing that directly against the upstream master branch, and you can see I'm going to have one conflict here. So go ahead and we're going to go ahead and hit merge into master. And if you have a conflict, you're going to get something that looks like this. So I'm going to get view conflict. And you're going to be able to see all the little files that have the conflicts. So right here, you can see this has a specific conflict that we'll have to resolve. And it's just that one file. So these are all the, the different files that it's going to update but this is the one that has the conflict. So how, to re how do we resolve that conflict? So we're going to go hit repository, hit open in Atom, and then we're going to browse down and find that file that is the one that needs the conflict resolution. Now the easiest way to do that is to right click on the file itself and hit open in Atom. And then back in Atom, it will just open that specific file right here for you. Okay, so it's really as simple as here is our changes, because it's me and myself and I, part of my team here, or their changes, which they actually have a team. So which do I want to pick? Well, nine times out of ten, it's going to be their changes. Um, specifically here though, I'm, you know, I, mean, I might uh, do our, I don't know, you have to go through it. Uh, if you're going to do my or their. So looking at this for a second here, I'm going to do their changes. You can see I, they were undefining iTerm Relax and RC Smoothing Filter for this F3 target. And this, part of the, part of the, and this is a part of the performance additions to, to make some of that stuff available and taking other stuff out. And uh, so that would undo what I did here. But they're also undefining these other two these other two functions within the firmware. So I'm going to go ahead and, and use their stuff. So I'm going to go ahead choose me. And then I'll just simply go into here and comment those out so that it's not undefining those things again. After I'm done there, I do like to toggle the get tab where you can see the file, the conflict is resolved, and then I can stage that change. Staging the change essentially means, you know, I'm gonna, I'm prepared. I'm gonna make that a part of a commit. So this is the commit. I'm gonna give it a description, and we're just gonna leave this, you know, merged, a remote tracking branch upstream master. So that file, basically, we we're saying, hey, that's ready. I'm gonna bring that down into this stage changes. That's gonna be a part of this commit. I'm gonna hit commit to master. Okay. In Atom, it pushed that commit in my local clone of that fork. I'm going to go to GitHub Desktop. You will see this will update, if you give it a second, because between GitHub Desktop and Atom, they keep in sync with each other. They're reading the same file on your C drive. So that push the, mark those changes as being committed to your local clone of the branch. If I go to History, and I clear this compare, you can see that local commit that you just made or I just made. And from there, I can push that up to the master branch. So let's go into here. i switch now to my master branch. Again, you can see that wasn't updated for 19 days. But if I go here now, I can hit push. And once that's done pushing, I can click on my GitHub, hit the F5 key to refresh, and you can see that that now was updated two minutes ago. Okay, well that was it. Hopefully that wasn't too confusing on how you can you know, make a fork of another project, 
then make a local clone and how you can use the GitHub desktop to keep your fork and your local clone first up to date which then you can push up to your fork uh, through the GitHub desktop application. Drop any questions down below. Thanks again. I hope this helped.